Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Picnic Twist by Blue Orange Games. This is a one to nine player game. It takes about roughly maybe 10 minutes, five minutes to play the game and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Picnic Twist, what are you doing? Well, you are drafting picnic cards and you are placing them down. It's a card placement drafting game in which you're trying to make like match like. You want food to be the same as other food near it, as well as you want tablecloths to be the same as well. You'll score points based on how many of each of these categories you can get to combine within each other in a 4x4 four four grid. There's an advanced mode of gameplay which changes the rules up just a little bit when it comes to scoring, but basically at the end of four rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner. It's a simple game with a complex interwoven strategy that's all mixed in one. Let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and then of course, what do I think about Picnic Twist? To begin the setup for the game Picnic Twist, the first thing you do is you take out the scorecard and place it within reach of all players. Then you give each player a happy face, circular token here, uh, and it has its own unique color, and that's the color you use for the game. Place each of those players' tokens somewhere within er uh, the area of the one space of the scoring marker. Then, go ahead and take the picnic deck. You'll shuffle all these cards up, and then you're going to go ahead and decide you want to play the advanced mode or not. If you don't want to play the advanced mode, all you're doing is that. Get, picking a color, placing the scorecard out, and then taking the picnic deck and shuffling it up. The advanced mode of play is a little different. You're basically going to shuffle up these random advanced cards and you're going to place out one of these random red cards, front or back, it doesn't matter as long as it's random, and one of these random uh, tile cards. It could be either a picnic like blanket or a pattern or it could be a food. And then you're going to do the same thing for the orange one. One red, one orange, and then two of the different category cards so that you have something that looks like this. This pattern with this, this red and then maybe this pattern or food with this orange. Set them next to each other and connect them to make sure that they make sense and then that's the advanced mode of play. It comes with a different way of scoring the game in addition to the basic mode of scoring which I'll talk about in my review. Alright, so probably the easiest game I'm ever going to teach on the channel. And there might be some competitors out there, but the basic idea of the game is you'll draw out two of these cards for each player playing the game. These are cards you'll be using in your tableau. The first thing you do is draft. You'll choose one of them and keep it and then you'll choose another and pass it on to a player. From there, you'll get a card from somebody else, in which case you're gonna have two of these cards here. That's it, that's how you draft. Finally, you'll take these out and you will place them down to form a grid. Your grid cannot be bigger than a four x four, you can never exceed that size, and you can choose to place the cards in any way you like, as long as at least one side of each card is touching, and you can choose to either A, place your cards over other cards or under other cards, as long as the sections connect to each other. And you can never make more than a four by four grid. And you'll just simply go ahead and select how you'd like to place these out. And then after everyone has done so, you will rinse and repeat. Each player will get two new cards. There's going to be a new draft where you'll pass out the new card and you'll get a new card from somebody else. And then you'll go ahead and select and place down to create a grid. Once you have done this four times, that means you should roughly get about uh, eight cards total, that's going to end the game, in which case you're going to score. And scoring is simple as well. You're going to score points for each of the sections on your grid that have at least three of any of the same type of thing. So if you have three sandwiches, you'll score those and they have to connect to each other. They can do a long run, they can all be jumbled up together. As long as they're connected by at least one side, you'll score for that. The only rule is it has to be at least three because you're gonna have to subtract two from each bunch that you have. Have four sandwiches connected to each other, subtract two, you get two points. Have five sets of a blue tablecloth put together, subtract two, you'll get three points. And you'll just simply take your marker and score for each of these things on the donut track. The donut is your victory points, and once you've finished scoring, everybody else is obviously going to do the same thing. Whoever has the most points is the winner. There's the advanced mode of the game, which is simply going to give you additional ways to score the game. Like for instance, it might say something like, if you have a blue tablecloth in the middle four sections of your four by four, then you lose two donuts for each one. Or it may give you bonus points, like for instance, whoever has the least amount of ice creams on their grid will score three bonus donuts. In which case you'll add those extra scoring mechanics to the grid here and see who wins. Yep, that's, that's it. That's Picnic Twist. It's pretty straightforward. So, well, 
Is it too simple or is it just the right amount of simple? Let's, let's discuss this. Let's discuss Picnic Twist. Well, the first thing and the most obvious thing to say about this game is if you're expecting Twilight Imperium 3rd or 4th edition, this is not the game for you. If you're expecting some super complex and tricky game, obviously you've already probably left by now. This is a very straightforward drafting and placing card game or tile card game, however you want to look at it, where you're making a 4x4 grid and you're trying to match the same of each type of symbol with symbols of the same type. And you're also trying to match two different categories on the same space. And as you can see, all these cards are going to have usually um, no more than two of the same type of thing. So it's got like this one has two of these ice creams and then it's got two of the blue tablecloths and then it has one of the blue and yellow tablecloths and then it also has a shake, a milkshake, right? And so there's going to be combinations from each of these cards here and you're just trying to match the combinations up and you're determine how you want to place them on your field. Do you want to go for tablecloths? Do you want to go for food? Do you want to try and go for a little bit of everything? And there's a bunch of different little strategies in this game to score you those victory points. Now obviously the best strategy possible would be to get your entire board filled with all of one tablecloth and one food type, but that's virtually impossible. So you have to try and make little decisive moves and cuts as you choose to select these cards here. What I love, and I mean love, about Picnic Twist is the fact that you can interweave cards. You can slide cards under cards. You can weave them like a thread so it goes under one and over another to try and create this little twisty type picnic blanket. I mean, you're basically making a picnic, right? And throwing all the food on there and all the tablecloths. And you want to make it as nice as possible. And apparently the, your guest only wants one type of food. So scoring those points by having 10 milkshakes minus two will score you eight. But if you have like five milkshakes and five ice creams, it'll be five minus two and five minus two, which will only give you six. So obviously more of one type is better. And with one type, type of tablecloth, that will be better as well. But there's additional ways to score the game in the advanced mode, where you start worrying about having the least of a certain type of object or tablecloth or avoiding certain spaces. There is a wide variety of them. It gives you one of each of the different types, because uh, each of these are both front and back. And then it gives you about four of the different ways in which you can have negative effects or positive effects. And so you have a wide variety of combinations. It's limited, but this is pretty much all you need. One is like you don't want to have something in the middle or you want to have the most of something. Um, or not have the most of something, or you don't have the least of something, you want to avoid all four of these spaces here. You want to score points with the orange ones where it's like, oh, for every single row of a certain type, you'll get two donuts, or for each different grouping of a type, you'll get an extra donut. And so you'll start playing with the advanced rules by focusing not only on the basic strategy of the game, but it also adds more little complexities to it. I'm a big fan of tile placement, and I love drafting games, and this has got both of these. Now, it's simple. It's really easy. This is a four round game that takes maybe five, 10 minutes tops. Even with nine players, it's really quick. The one thing I obviously would suggest is when you're drafting with more than two players, to make sure that when you draft the first round and you pass to the left, the second round, even though it doesn't say in the rules, you should pass to the right. So that way, because you are giving tiles to other players and each of them need different types of tile sets, it's kind of a nice little way of adding a little more strategy to the game and deciding which one of the two tiles you want to give based on what round it is in the game. I really like this game. Now, it's, of course, a light game. That's the only real issue that people might have with this, is it is so light. But there is a strategy involved. If you couldn't interweave these, I wouldn't even like this game. But because you're able to kind of maneuver these tiles in ways you... I've never actually had to do in a lot of games. I think there might have been a game at some point in time where I played a, 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 a tile game where you had to weave in, where you got, like, these two here, and you're like, oh, I need this one on the left, I need this one on the right, but I, I don't want the one in the middle. And then you can just slide this baby in and now, now you've got exactly what you need. That's, it, it just feels so good. I always like that feeling of like successfully placing something exactly how I kind of want it, even when I don't necessarily get the right cards that I need. There's a little bit of luck in this game as to what you get past, which can also affect based on what the player chooses to give you or just what cards you draw. But for the most part, it's all about interweaving cards, selecting tiles, selecting colors, and deciding how you want to space things out. You are going to get enough cards to fill the 4x4 grid, but you don't actually have to fill it. And sometimes that may be part of your strategy as well. It's a simple, light, 
filler game that you will be shocked as to when you play this game, you'll want to play one more. And then just one more, because as you progress throughout the game, you just keep getting better and better. I love Picnic Twist. It's solid, it's light, it's fun, it's a nice filler. It's a game I could easily suggest putting in to kind of like a game night as you set up for new games. And it's also a great little stocking stuffer. Ah, uh, the box is cute too, so it just gets bonus points for me. All in all, Picnic Twist is solid. I'm keeping this game. It'll go somewhere within my little gaming collection of when I want to play a light game with new people that are just coming in, because it teaches you drafting and time placement all in five to ten minutes excellent thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game picnic twist by blue orange games if you're interested there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up this little card drafting tile placement game uh and if you like this type of little game you'll instantly know if this is type type of thing for you or not or if you're a new person or you want to get people that are new into gaming then yes oh it, it's it's so fun and i'm like I guess I'm getting more into light games now because gosh, I'm really enjoying this one. We also did a live stream of this game, which you can see on this channel here. It'll show you if you go to the live section, it'll show you playing us playing Picnic Twists and how intoxicatingly like addicted we got to playing multiple rounds. You can also check the website on filteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And if you really love us, to the bottom of our hearts, you can hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to creating a picnic with a twist with you next time.